GameStar's G8 Galileo mobile gaming controller might be one of the best mobile gaming accessories on the market today. But I always get a little suspicious when something seems too perfect, so let's check it out today and see if you should consider picking one up as well. GameStar is known for their third-party gaming controllers for consoles and phones with a solid selection of options on their website. What I have today is their G8 Galileo mobile gaming controller that introduces an ergonomic feel to their already excellent controller functions. And to be transparent, GameStar did send out this controller for review, however, they have zero input on my thoughts. And I wanna get that out of the way early because if you start feeling like I'm being too positive about it, there is a reason. It's because it's that good. Made of a high-quality plastic similar to actual console controllers, the G8 feels premium to the touch the trigger designs actually have weight to them, and with Hall Effect joysticks, everything about this controller just gives you the impression that it's going to last you a good while. Once you're past the material quality, you're met with the design and layout, which is where one of the only two negative points I have on it are. The G8 is marketed for big hands, and as someone with very big hands that measure nine inches from the base of my palm to the tip of my middle finger, and 10 and a half inches from the tip of my pinky to the tip of my thumb, I wouldn't say that it holds up for what I personally find comfortable. However, with that said, it is a thousand times more comfortable than just holding my phone to game. One of my all-time favorite mobile games is Rocket League Sideswipe, and when using the on-screen touch controls, it can limit my field of view with my fingers getting in the way. But with the G8, it not only opens up my visibility to what I'm seeing, but also makes gaming way more comfortable and actually improves my gameplay. Part of what helps with the gameplay experience, aside from just using a controller, is that there's next to no input lag because it plugs in via USB-C to your phone. And GameStar implemented a genius feature by making the USB-C dongle movable so that when you take your phone in and out of the controller, it doesn't damage your phone or the controller itself. And side note, I'm also very thankful that I upgraded to the iPhone 15 Pro Max recently so that I can finally use USB-C products with it, but the GameStar controller is compatible with all phones that have USB-C. The button layout on the controller is similar to that of an Xbox controller, which is what most of GameStar products use, and gives you a D-pad, ABXY buttons, offset joysticks, bumpers, and triggers, and don't forget the paddles on the back. For the rest of the physical features for the G8, it has a sliding spring-loaded clamp that holds your phone securely, Hall of joysticks and triggers, and ports for pass-through charging and an auxiliary port for headphones. And a really unique feature about the G8 is that it has face plates on the front that are magnetic and fully detachable, which then allows you to remove and replace your joysticks. Speaking of which, it also comes with three different sizes of joysticks to swap out with the ones already on the controller, depending on what you prefer for the type of game you're playing. So from the physical side of the G8, it's fantastic. But what about actually using it? This is the fun part, because it has a ton of features built into the controller itself. I won't go over every remapping feature, but there are some really cool ones that are super easy to do, such as holding the M button and left or right trigger that turns it into a hairpin trigger, giving you 100% signal strength anytime you tap a trigger so that you're not having to press it all the way down. You can also press the M button and any other button and it'll activate turbo mode for that button. There's a lot of really cool button mapping features that allow you to change them while playing instead of through an app. Speaking of which, GameStar does have an app for the G8, however, it's not compatible with iOS 13.4 and above systems at the filming of this video. But I'm okay with this personally, because I like to just be able to plug and play and I don't spend a lot of time remapping and getting into an app, so not having to be forced through an app to do that is really nice. Now, speaking of plug and play, the second downside that I personally have for the G8 is the fact that it doesn't fit my phone case. The G8 does allow you to use phone cases, but they cannot be thicker than one millimeter. And unfortunately for me, my Ondar leather case is too thick, so I do have to pop the phone out to use the controller. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but it is good to know before you purchase. Now, one thing I definitely wanna compliment the G8 on is for how versatile it is. It has three different modes that allow you to jump between PlayStation Remote Play, controller supported games, and games that are touchscreen only. You simply press and hold the top two buttons for two seconds, and then it'll switch between these modes. And this is the real value of the controller, because not being limited to mobile games is a real strength. Streaming games to your controller is where it really comes in handy, because then you can use it on PlayStation, Xbox Game Pass, and others. Which kind of makes me feel like I don't need to get a PlayStation Portal anymore, because this works just fine. Speaking of which, while I still think that the Portal is a Sony cash grab, I'm still on the hunt for one to bring it to the channel for review. So if you would like to see that review, then be sure to subscribe and join the Freaky Tech family so that you can see it when it comes out. But being able to throw your phone into this controller, turn on your PS5, and start playing is a really fantastic experience. So after all of this, let's talk about the actual value of it. Unless it's on sale, the G8 Galileo comes in at $80, which is more than base model console controllers and most other mobile gaming controllers on the market. But this is one of those true, you get what you pay for scenarios that's actually worth it. The build quality alone is top 
notch and makes it feel like it's going to last. Then you add the functionality of the controller itself with how easy it is to change modes and remap buttons mid game. And finally combine it with usability across not only mobile games, but streaming from your consoles and game services. It makes the G8 a very well-rounded and balanced product that covers almost every need you could have if you like gaming on your phone. And that's kind of the big thing. If you don't like gaming on your phone, then it's probably not worth it for you. But as someone who likes to have this option on the go, especially for travel, this thing is a no brainer. So for me personally, I think it's a product that is worthy of your dollars. And it's one of the better ones that I've come across since I started this channel. But I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you feel like the G8 would benefit your gaming? And if you already have it, is there anything that you like or dislike about it? I'd love to hear from you. And if you are interested in learning more about the G8, then I do have a link in the description below. But thank you for your time. And I really appreciate you spending some of your day with me. Again, I'm Corey with Freaky Tech Reviews. I'll see you next time.